We've all gotten used to the idea of electric cars. Now companies are trying to get viable electric airplanes. That may sound like pie in the sky, but last month, the company Zunum Aero took a big leap forward when the charter flight firm JetSuite said it was purchasing up to 100 of Zunum's still-to-be-completed aircraft by 2022. And with other major backers, Zunum Aero is considered best positioned to make it faster, cheaper, and greener to fly. I went to Zunum's headquarters in Kirkland, Washington, to see how they plan to do it. Flying over the Pacific Northwest, Matt Knapp sees nothing but possibilities just over the horizon. So this is the plane as you envision it, right? That's how we envision it. That is our 10 to 15 seat aircraft rolling down the runway. This is a very inexpensive to fly airplane that makes you look like you are a world-class business jet owner. Knapp co-founded Zunum Aero along with fellow aerospace engineer Ashish Kumar. The company is racing to build the first ever electric propulsion airplane for regional travel. He would say, well, what if you could do this? And I go look at the technology and, and we come back together and say, wow, we could do that. The tech startup began not in anyone's garage, but on the playground where their wives and children met five years ago. Gretchen came to Shifra and they're like, here, there's a guy who has an idea. He had no idea what he was getting into. <laughs> <laughs> Zunum's lofty ambition, to rewrite aviation history. Since 1980, government deregulation has consolidated the airline industry into a network of major hubs, all but grounding short-haul flights. From 1980 up through 2010, um, the airlines went from 20 to 80 seats. You gotta fill all those seats, you need a big runway, it makes lots of noise, and suddenly you have a lot fewer airports with service. Zunum wants to change that. This is crazy. <laughs> what am I looking at? <laughs> Every one of those dots is an airport. There are over 13,000 airports in this country, and well over 4,000 of those are currently set up to allow commercial service of the type we're talking. There's all these options, and they're sitting there, and they're funded, and we just need to be using them. Zunum is designing its plane to take advantage of those secondary regional airports, under 1,000 miles apart, a perfect range for routes like San Francisco to Los Angeles, Kansas City to Oklahoma City, Atlanta to New Orleans, or New York to Boston. Door to door, mm. let's say it was a New York to Boston flight, do you see this cutting down your travel time as well? Yes, so if you were to take a sub thousand mile trip today by air, you would probably spend three quarters of that time actually on the ground. Driving to the hub, security, baggage belts, check-in, and sitting on the tarmac, taxiing, waiting to take off, right? So today you probably budget five hours leaving home to get to a meeting in the other city, where we would say we could drop that time by half. How? By not, you know, by avoiding the large hubs. Smaller airfields that are closer to where you are leaving from and that are closer to where you are landing at. Kumar says not relying on jet fuel will cut emissions on average by 80 percent and slash the price of a ticket, which right now costs several hundred dollars. What would it cost me on an aircraft like this? Well, our estimates would put it at about half or a quarter of that. We don't set prices, obviously the airline set prices, right. but we think from a cost standpoint, we can take that down by a factor of two. Zunum estimates that a seat would cost eight cents per passenger mile, meaning New York to Boston could be as cheap as $25 each way. You're changing transportation in the future forever. Yeah, yeah. Graham Warwick is the technology managing editor at Aviation Week. He's been covering the aircraft industry for nearly 50 years. This is probably the most exciting period in av aviation that I have personally gone through. Warwick says Zunum is on the path to meeting its goals. Technically, um, their timeline, which is, I think, aiming for certification in 2022, looks doable. The issue that they face is can the regulatory timeline match the techni technical development timeline? After years of delay, electric propulsion is now on the FAA's radar. The agency is currently writing new standards to certify this groundbreaking fleet of airplanes. Zunum can then take those standards and do the testing to prove to the FAA that their system meets those standards. Last month, Zunum let CBS News see the first round of tests on the electric and power system that will eventually propel the aircraft. The company hopes to test their system in the air sometime in 2019. Five years ago, it would have looked like pie in the sky. But the push on the car side to get to a, a reasonable range for a car, with 300 to 400 miles on a single charge, 
drove the battery technology to a point where it becomes feasible to do a small aircraft with battery power. Now we're looking at the internals, nice comfortable seating in there. The big green block on the left is the wing, and the batteries in the wing. Zunim is designing its first plane as a hybrid, battery powered with a gas turbine as a backup. The idea of having that much battery power, the amount that you'd need, mm -hmm. is that the biggest, I guess, hurdle to overcome? Not at all. The buses on the streets right now, they're running two, three, four times what that airplane has. Wow. We have basically a Tesla on each wing. Zunim is betting that between the replacement of smaller conventional planes and more people choosing to fly instead of drive, electric propulsion could generate a new $3 trillion industry. I think basically you get them built and then you have to have people just accept this is okay in my form of transportation now. The same way the first time airplanes came out, people for had sure. to agree to it. But $25 for a flight, I mean, sign, sign me up. up. <laughs> sign me up. Exactly.